Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Scott and today we're going to be running this Case steam engine. So what we're looking at here is a hand-built quarter scale, maybe a third scale, Case traction engine. I bought this many years ago and a little bit of a project. I got it running probably three years ago and I've been slowly fixing things and updating stuff on it. Built by this gentleman, F.E. or Adnick. Did a little Google searching on him. Couldn't find anything. No plans. Nothing about him. Looks like some of his relatives, at least people with the same last name, might be up in the Minnesota area somewhere. So if you know anything, let me know. Um, it weighs about 600 pounds and it's quite a beast for a little guy. All right, well, let's go ahead and get it pulled out of the shop here, put some water in it and get it fired up. So here we go. We got running off air supply. And this is the clutch, this is the throttle, and this is forwards or backwards. So we'll put it forward, engage the clutch, and we're going to drive it outside where we can start to oil the engine and put a fire in it to raise steam. First time it's seen the sun in a long time. Next thing we're going to do here is we'll fill the boiler up with water, and then I'm using this water that came, it's not straight well water, it's actually softened water. I really don't think it's necessary, but like I said, we complicate everything as hobbyists. She is filling up. And I'm going to fill it up so we get about halfway up on here. It's usually it holds about five gallons. Yep, there's the water. Let's just run them out. So you get a little over half a glass that fast. They're like little bunks and they hold, this side's got coal, I put my oil and junk in that side. Um, but underneath of it, there's a water tank that we fill up through that port that holds five gallons of water. So total we got ten gallons of water on the engine. That's number one rule is always have water. And then here I have a trailer I'm going to hook up behind all my kids toys that holds a whole bunch I don't even know probably like 30 gallons or 40 but before we light it I almost forgot we gotta use this draft inducer thing just a piece of copper pipe I'd smash the end on and bent a 180 that blows air up the chimney basically sucks air through firebox right there. So I'm going to hook my air up. That's going. Grab the torch. And let's get this a little farther in. Keep all the fire in there, hopefully. There's the fire. that shut as much as you can. And then I got these pieces of wood back here. It's like spalted. Interesting wood. I don't really know what it is. Pretty lightweight, so probably not the best for that. I'm sorry. I'm not used to videotaping this sort of thing, so bear with me as I work one-handed. 
just gonna throw a bunch of wood in there. You can see it's building the fire pretty good. And this right here is hooked to a cable that when I pull it, that now when I pull it out, it opens up this damper down here to let more air into the firebox. Air actually goes in that way, and then your fire is right inside of here. Because up there, through the boiler tubes, the fire tubes in the boiler, and up out the chimney. So now while we are raising pressure, We have two different kinds of oil. There's steam oil, steam cylinder oil, and just normal oil there. Well, it's really thick, but it's kind of normal oil. This stuff goes in this lubricator right here. Well, it looks like we could use a little bit. This stuff is super thick. This is a neat little lubricator. It runs off this valve train. So if you turn the motor over, it's got a little ratcheting mechanism right there and it's kind of like a small little cylinder pump that just turns that crank just a little bit. And that pumps oil through this little tube directly into here, which goes into the engine that lubricates the piston and cylinder. Now raising steam on here takes about half hour before we get enough pressure in it. And now we go through and basically lubricate anything that moves, which is hard to do one-handed here. Come on. How many times am I going to mess that up before I figure it out? As many as it takes, I guess. And all these little caps, I'm going to do off camera because I just cannot articulate that well. Or maybe I can. Look at that. These bolt holes right here are actually oil passages. I learned that when I was rebuilding it. Pretty neat. All right, and here's another neat little thing I forgot to show you. This little guy is an oiler, or a grease injector or something. But it's threaded right here, and what you do is you fill this thing up with grease. And when you screw it down, it injects it into this connecting rod bearing which I just opened up these clearances between them a little bit here so I could tighten it up it was pretty neat it's adjustable rod bearing so when you start getting a rod knock you just tighten the dang thing up pretty easy solution too bad it's not that easy on a race car but pretty cool got the water wagon hooked up Probably about 10 minutes in to warming it up since we started the fire. Pretty much once you light the fire, you can't walk away from these things. They just need constant attention. Not quite as relaxing as we all pictured it. Let's see how the fire is looking. Decent? Got my coal loaded up. Once it gets hot enough, and enough, once it builds pressure to about like 30 pounds or so in there, then I can take off the air compressor. And it'll just run on its own. No more life support. So this, and it's gonna take a little while, which kinda sucks because I put a little bit too much water in it. You can see the water levels way up at the top. 
way up here when it should be probably about half glass. It raised steam a lot faster at half glass. So it's got a, a lot more mass of water to heat up now. So now we just kind of walk around the engine looking at stuff. This is the governor and it does work. It's a little bit finicky at times. That rotates with the flywheel by that flat leather belt. And as the spins faster, the balls go out and push down this little needle that shuts off the supply of steam to the valve chest, basically the engine. So, yeah, when you hear the term balls out, run the engine balls out, that's full throttle as fast as it goes, and that's what, obviously, the balls out. On these smaller models are kind of finicky. Like, even just thick oil in here makes them hard to move, and you really got to get it up to temperature nice and warm before you get it adjusted, or they just don't really work quite right. And then the steering is... Oh, I can't remember how many it is. It's a lot of turns for the steering wheel to go lock to lock on here. Why don't we just check it quick? So that's about all the way over. One, two, three, four. About four turns before it even starts moving. Twenty-six. Tires about hitting. So yeah, 26 turns lock to lock. Quick ratio steering, sort of. And it literally turns with the worm gear connected to the steering wheel. The worm gear turns that roller that has grooves machined into it to pull on these chains. It's starting to get pressure. I can hear stuff boiling and popping over here. So hopefully we can get this engine ticking over on its own and get this life support off. Oh yeah, see since this video started, it already jumped up. Shoot, probably 10 or 15 PSI, so it's going to start going pretty quick now. Once it gets boiling, then it uh, picks up the pace pretty good. I can hear the fire crackling. Oh yeah, look at that. Throw some more wood in there. Unhook it from the air compressor. Right before I do that, I like to give it a couple minutes to run on coal, so I'll put some scoops of coal in here. While the wood fire is burning nice and hot and building pressure. Hot. Keep that door shut. And the most important thing, everybody will tell you when running steam engines, water, water, water. You are constantly worried about water. That's the most important thing. It's a safety deal. About 30 PSI. Those two brass plugs, that's kind of right where the top of the box is where the fire's inside the firebox. So if water gets below there, then there's nothing to cool down that steel plate that the fire is just red hot against, just really burning right there. So this is the most important thing, the water glass and making sure you got water in it. And that's got a crank driven water pump right here with a gear reduction, dual action. So it pumps both both uh, forward and back. And then we got a hand pump over here. And that is working. I gotta quit doing that or I'm gonna add too much water. So I'm up this. Oh yeah, I do have the blower on. There we go. And that's controlled with this. There's a little valve right here. You can see it turning copper line runs up. 
So yeah, I can turn it down just a little bit. I don't need to crank it up super fast. But we got to make sure we have enough airflow to get the coal in. Now it's just running on its own. Well, look at that big fire. Oh yeah. You could probably turn this blower down a little bit. We don't need a lot of pressure to drive around. I like to get around like 60 or 70 just so the more pressure you run the drier the steam is so if you run low pressure you're spraying water all over yourself back here driving it speaking of driving this is where you sit put your feet here I'll show you all right so we got enough pressure we should be able to start ticking the engine over so what we do, we open up these cylinder drains right here. That lets the very first water that comes into our steam, that comes into the cylinder, condenses like instantly because this is still cold, it's not hot yet. So it turns to water. You can't compress water in here as the piston's going back and forth. So you have to open these drains. So when you first start the engine, it'll spit water out. And once it starts spitting out steam for a little bit, it kind of heats up the cylinder and the piston and everything should work okay. So we'll make sure it throttles down, make sure that we're in, the clutch is disengaged, I'll put it in reverse, open up our steam valve here, and I should be able to get this thing to tick over. goes. See all that water it's spitting out? A ton of junk. And I just did that packing in here on that piston rod. So that's spitting out water. We'll have to tighten that up. But it's alive. See, and you can see this oiler moving. pumping oil into the cylinder, that's a good thing. We'll let that. Still spitting a lot of water. You can see it's oily water, that's good. Lots of oil in there. I still have the blower on to build the heat up faster. We can shut these. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, I should be wearing gloves. The engine speeds up a little bit. Turn down the RPM. See, look at that pressure. It's about where we want to start driving the thing around. Here I go with no gloves again. Ha! So this thing needs some coal. Chugging away. Plenty of water in the glass. I'm gonna hop on here. What a beautiful engine. I love these things. It looks so cool. I need some kind of implements to put behind it so I can actually put it to work or something. It would be a little more fun than just driving around. Let's check it out. Well, it's going now, though, boy. Everybody's complaining about the high price of gas. This thing will literally just run on wood and water. You 
you know, probably not uh, worth uh, extra effort, loss of convenience, or not to mention we're going as fast, I don't know, one mile per hour maybe, but I'm not running very high RPM on the motor, the engine, sorry. You guys will have to cut me a little slack. I'm not a hardcore steam engine guy. I'm actually not even wearing the uh, coveralls and all that stuff like they always wear. Just cruising around. I really do enjoy running this thing though. It's so mechanical. I can just watch it go and listen to that thing go all day. running. We got the water pump right here working. I think it just needed primed and just used a little bit because this thing has been sitting for almost a year since I ran it. Just threw some coal in it so it's smoking a little bit. Tons of water, 75 psi in the gauge. Um, so it's running good and happy now. And I keep checking the steam cylinder lubricator up front and it's using oil so that's a good sign because it's getting pumped into the engine and I apologize if you guys like watching steam videos where they blow the horn every five seconds and honestly to me it's kind of annoying it does work but yeah it just I don't know I don't like hearing it every five seconds. I think it's customary that engineers, what is it? I think it's two honks when they stop and one honk when they go. That way people around them know if the engine is going to be moving or stopping or what. Look at all that smoke. It smells great. I love it. It's no speed demon. Looks like we can use a little water. Hard to tell if this thing's see when it's running higher RPM, the pressure goes up almost right away from the increased draft. And right now it's running on the governor. It's running balls out. This is as fast as it is currently set to go. Get you on this side too. Sounds great. Let's slow her down just a smidge. Sometimes it's nice when driving these things to, uh, Pop off and walk around. It's sure convenient for a video, but when you sit on this little thing, bending over to run this, it's just hard on a guy's back. I'm not super old, I'm like 38 right now, so that's pretty old, I guess, but not officially over the hill yet. See that packing needs to be tightened up a little bit. Look at that, almost up to 100 pounds. Let's see what this fire looks like. Pretty cool. Just 
supposed to be wearing gloves, but sometimes I don't. I got calluses built up already, so no biggie. But I suppose a lot of it is safety. You know, say if one of these steam lines pops off or something. It's super hot. Because with this water and steam being under pressure, I think we all know it boils at 212 degrees, but when you put it under pressure, the water now boil, boils at a higher temperature. So you're talking like four or 500 degrees, I believe. At 100 PSI, I really don't know. So don't quote me, but it's hot. You don't want to get hit by it. Yeah, this whole engine is hot right now. I think it's like, it's a beautiful 70 degrees, 72 degrees. And I actually got some sweat running off me from driving this thing. I love it. Trailer unhooked. Getting ready to cool it down and put it away. Just kind of letting the fire burn down now. That's why I got the blower on to help burn it down. Not too much going on, just some glowing coals from the coal. It won't take too long for that to burn away and run out of pressure. And when that happens, we will uh, open up what's called a blowdown valve. And that gets all the junk out of the bottom of the boiler, theoretically. Some of the sediment, because as you burn water, the solids in the water remain in the bottom. So that's why you can imagine running dirty well water with a lot of sediment and minerals in it after hundreds of gallons and yada yada yada. You end up with a bunch of sludge usually in the bottom of these boiler legs down here. And if you don't get rid of it, it can like turn to cement. That's kind of how this one was when I got it. It was a pain in the butt. called a smoke box. That's just a door. It's hot. But now we're going to do what we call punching the flues. And you take this thing. It's got a wire brush at the end. Just a long stick. And it's almost impossible to do with one hand, but you put it down into these tubes that are called flues and you clean them up. Alright, so I just got done punching the flues in here. And you can see, there's actually copper flues in this engine. Which is really cool. They don't corrode as much, they seem to seal real good. And, it conducts heat faster. So all the fire that comes out of the firebox goes through all those copper pipes. Called flues. And that's what helps heat up the water faster. <coughs> oh yeah, we made a mess. Look at all this. All this dust came out from punching the flues. Yuck. So I'm actually going to get a shop vac to suck all this garbage up. And other than that, it's still blowing down. Oh, it's about done. 
And I like to put it in a pan so I can look to see if there's any solid chunks that come out. Because sometimes you get pieces of scale or whatever. But I don't see anything. It looks really good. Which is weird, but it's good.